get to you uh, shortly. But there is also um, a gentleman uh, on the floor who I can't resist but come to. Yes, and I'm going to start with you, former President Mbeki. It, not last century, but the century before, mm. was when the railway mm. line was built, mm. but the train is now running as of now. So it took 100 years for us to get here. But the reality is that we don't have another 100 years to spend for the next set of development. What needs to change? In the context, everybody's familiar with the notion of the African Renaissance, but the practicable and element of, of that, the how, how do we get there? Yes, we need young, dynamic leaders, but the challenge is we may not necessarily have enough of them in the right space to get us there. The modern moderator is this thing working? It is. It's not. No, it's not. It's not. Can we have one that's working, please? May I borrow yours? It's not a civil per issue, I promise. It's not. <laughs> Thank you. I'm also a civil society. <laughs> no, but I think the, to me, the, 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 man, the, the way the panelists approach this thing is correct to say we have to answer this question first. What is the Africa we want? So we say we want an Africa that is free of violent conflict and war. What leadership do you produce to get that result? We want an Africa that is free from poverty. What kind of leadership do you need to create to, to end that poverty? We want an Africa that is free of, that, that, that is driven by women's emancipation. Where is this leadership? How do you create it? We want an Africa that is free of corruption. How do you produce this leadership that is not corrupt? Now, these are the questions I took or to answer these practical things that President Kagame was talking about. And it's not an easy question to answer. But I think critically, and we were discussing this thing yesterday, critically, we need a critical self-assessment of ourselves as Africans. To say, as, as, President, as President Kagame was saying, we've been discussing this thing about the quality of leadership, challenges we face for a very long time. But when have we sat down to say, now let us assess, you know, you, you, you Tabo Mbeki, were president of South Africa for so long. Let's assess your performance. Did you provide this kind of leadership that is suitable for this Africa that we want? Where did you go wrong? We've got the African peer review mechanism, which President Obasanjo can speak about. That's part of what it was supposed to do, so that we sit as peers to say, no, but the President, you are misbehaving. You are stealing public resources. You've accessed power in order to put money in your pocket. This is not the leadership we want. But we're not doing that sufficiently because we're afraid. We're afraid to speak frankly to one another about the wrong things that we're doing. And I think if we don't do that, we will meet a century hence to discuss the same question. I think that critical self-assessment of the continent is necessary. And I mean a real, critical, truthful self-assessment that's critical. And I think that's a very, that would be an important step forward in terms of uh, uh, producing this kind of leadership which Africa wants. I'm handing this to President Kapp. I, I suspected you might do that, yes. <laughs> what a cruel gesture, Tabo. <coughs> we want an Africa, as you said, where there is equality of gender, equality of opportunity, um, promise of a good, healthy life, promise of an educated society, promise of a leadership that thinks more about service than being served. We want all of that, borders to, 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 to be removed and so on. Why don't we have it? My answer is very clear. Because you have a selfish leadership, extremely selfish. 
We often think we often think of the problem of leadership as being the problem of the leaders alone. Fine. They must be defined, have integrity, have all those we want. But to succeed, they must be able to implant those attributes in the population. Their political parties must be organized in such a way that they reflect those values and embody those aspirations in their political interaction. If they don't, you have trouble. We are multi-ethnic societies. What basic values have we embodied in these societies? Equality or is it diversity? How do you convert diversity into strength rather than diversity as a cause for war and internecine fighting? Can it be done? It can be done. It's been done in centuries before in Europe and elsewhere. Why can't it be done in Africa? But we don't have the will because we are selfish. We are concerned of the here and now in the seat I am in. That's wrong. We have you know, it's ironical that you have a, a continent with the best natural resources of any others as of today, but they are being exploited for the sustenance of those who enslaved us and continue exploiting us rather than being exploited for our own ends, uh, emancipation. <laughs> Why? Because you have a leadership that does not recognize the degree of present day, uh, present day enslavement, economic enslavement and the necessity for, uh, for, for, for emancipation. It's ironical. We, we talk about development, but we don't stop in time to define what development in our kind of situation is. One of the greatest reasons of admiration for this country, for instance, is the fact that you have here a universal system of health and education delivery. <laughs> now, that is development. Rwanda is more developed than any of these Western countries in this regard, where you have assured <laughs> health and education. So we really must rethink where we are, why we are what we are, what we can be, and how we can. I agree, women, youth, and all those things. But internally, the fault is in us, dear Brutus, not in our stars. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um,